What's the best way to learn and memorize something? It's to teach it after you know the answer. Today I will show you what I have learned about using my ZBE10 as a webcam through USB without a software and with a great autofocus. I will also compare the video quality in WhatsApp and FaceTime as conferencing examples because usually you can expect better results using FaceTime. I will do the comparison test using my M1 MacBook webcam my iPhone 12 Pro Max selfie camera and my ZV-E10. You will also know the pros and cons using the USB streaming versus the capture cards. So stay tuned. How's it going guys? This is Mahdi Takash here and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I do videos on tech, life experience stories, tips and tricks tutorials. So consider subscribing if you want to polish your knowledge in these areas. Now to activate streaming mode, you have to go to the second menu, press on USB streaming and you are ready to go. Now connect the USB to your computer. Personally, I made a custom menu where I include this function or you can assign one of the camera buttons to be streaming button function. As a shortcut concerning camera settings, you can leave it on the auto mode or manual mode. Personally, I prefer the manual mode where I can control all the camera aspects like input resolution, white balance, exposure and so on to get the best looking image. And for sure, I don't activate the active stabilization mode and be sure that your focus is set on continuous autofocus. After activating the streaming mode, it's time now to switch to the ZV-E10 as your webcam in WhatsApp, FaceTime or Zoom or any streaming platform. For that, you have to press on the three dots buttons or also in the menu bar at the top of your screen, you can change the input under call or video for WhatsApp or FaceTime respectively. Then you just have to switch from the internal webcam to the ZV-E10 and also the mic to the ZV-E10 mic in the same way. This is the test now using the M1 MacBook 720p webcam on FaceTime in a well-lighted situation and this is the best that you can get from this webcam. This is the test now on WhatsApp using the M1 MacBook webcam, the 720p one in a well-lighted situation and this is the best that you can get from this webcam. This is the test now using my iPhone 12 Pro Max selfie camera in 1080p and this is the best that you can get from this selfie camera in a well-lighted situation. Just now using my iPhone 12 Pro Max selfie camera on WhatsApp and this is the best that you can get from this camera on a well-lighted situation. This is the test using the zv 10 as a webcam in streaming mode in 720p connected to the laptop using the USB Type-C and this is the best that you can get from this zv 10 as a webcam in a well-lighted situation. This is the test using the zv 10 as a webcam in 720p in streaming mode connected to my laptop using my USB-C and this is the best that you can get from the zv 10 as a webcam in a well-lighted situation. Product showcase button and background defocus are two features in Sony zv 10 you can toggle it on and off while streaming. Product showcase mode when it's on, you can show some products or something in your hand without covering your eyes. I will show you. So now this is when the product showcase is off. I think I have to cover my eyes in order to focus on this. Okay. Yeah. If I press this bin button in the back of the camera, this is the test now while you are using the product showcase mode. Now I am in focus. Now I am out of the focus. However, the background defocus is an automatic background blur button where the camera automatically adjusts the settings to give you a nice bokeh effect. The background defocus is a button on the top of the camera where you can press it. This is the test now when the background defocus is on. Now it's off. Now it's on again. I want to clarify an ambiguity that I also had towards clean HDMI terminology. First, you probably heard that the zb 10 has a clean HDMI. It's clean. clean HDMI is when the camera information and settings that you see on the tilt screen are not shown to others but only to you while streaming or video calling. To do so, go to HDMI settings in the second page of the fifth menu and then click on HDMI info display and turn that off. This is an important step only if you are going to use a capture card which is not the case for this video because we are using USB instead of the HDMI port. <laughs> 
what's the difference between USB streaming versus the capture card. Before continuing, if you are getting benefits from this video, considering liking and subscribing, I will appreciate that. Starting by USB connections, the pros are easy to use, just plug and play, zero dollars to spend. What's cool when you are streaming using USB-C is that the camera is always charging, so no need to worry about the camera battery. And one of the pros that the clean HDMI is not necessary to turn it off here, zero worries, just plug and play. However, the cons are it's only capped to 720p resolution, much better than the crappy 720p in your MacBook or the 1080p in your iPhone. As far as I know, Apple capped the FaceTime resolution to 1080p even that the iPhone is capable to record in 4K. Plus, in case of the USB streaming, you will have to change the input of the mic to the ZVE10, otherwise you will have some sync issue if you keep the voice coming from your computer. However, by just connecting a mic to the camera, you will be able to use an external mic and get a great result. One more thing concerning the USB streaming that sometimes you will notice that the connection is a bit delayed and a bit choppy. Now let's discuss the pros and cons of streaming using capture card. The pros are you can expect the highest possible resolution and results depending on the capture card you want to invest in. Here no mic sync issues, no connection delay issues that you will encounter sometimes with USB connection. The cons are that you will have more connections. The camera HDMI port is connected to the capture card than into PC. Also capture card price are so high for the best result you have to invest around 120 euros like the Camlink 4K. However, there are some cheap capture cards for 10 euros, but for sure you will not get the same results as the Camlink 4K. One more thing you have to keep it in mind, you have to charge the camera separately using the USB-C or power it using the battery, but preferable a dummy battery for continuous shooting. And don't forget in this case that you have to turn on the clean HDMI mode as I showed you before. to invest in a capture card? This is a question you have to answer by yourself. You can start by the USB and then later invest in a capture card. For me, in the moment, it's not worth it at all because I will use it occasionally. I'm not a streamer by any means. Perhaps I will get a cheap 10 euros capture card and test it to bump the resolution from 720p to 1080p resolution. So guys, that's all for today. Go and check other videos on my channel about the ZVE10. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more interesting content comment below if you have any question or maybe i have missed any information don't choose wrong see you in the next video peace